telescopes have become an astronomer's best friend, assisting us with identifying new features of our ever-mysterious universe, unveiling its wonders, and probing us to ask more questions about what we think is reality. However, it may surprise you to learn that telescopes were not an invention from astronomy. In 1608, the first published invention of a telescope was accredited to Hans Lippershey, although there were others who have been associated with the first prototype. Initially, these telescopes were only used to look at distant objects on Earth. It wasn't until the following year that a telescope was used to look at celestial objects, which was performed by Galileo, who made several adjustments to Lippershey's original design. Before this revolutionary moment, the only way to observe objects outside of Earth was by using the naked eye. Thus began the telescope's association to astronomy. There are two basic types of optical telescopes. Refractors focus the light they collect using a system of lenses, whereas reflectors use mirrors to gather the light. Initially, all telescopes were refracting, but suffered from chromatic aberration, meaning the light hitting the large objective lens from longer wavelengths, shown in red, is focused at a slightly different point to the light from shorter wavelengths, shown in blue, creating a blurry, rainbow-edged image. However, Mirrors are inherently free from chromatic aberration, as all wavelengths of light are reflected to the same degree. Thus mirrors became the primary optical component in modern professional grade telescopes. Not only do reflected telescopes suffer less from optical effects, but they can be made much larger than a refractor telescope, and are cheaper to build than a refractor of the same size. The AAT at Siding Springs is a reflecting telescope, with a 3.9 meter diameter primary mirror resulting in a collecting area of 12 meters squared. To make a telescope more flexible in tracking an object in the sky, alt azimuth was invented. And to further correct for turbulence in the atmosphere affecting the final image, adaptive optics was installed to large telescopes. However, I have only spoken about optical telescopes, but before I proceed, one must understand the concept of the electromagnetic spectrum. When it comes to light, it turns out there is a lot more of it than what we actually see with our eyes. We see what we have appropriately titled visible light, and it ranges from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. This is only a slither of the total light that's been detected, and when it comes to observing the universe, we have a telescope to accommodate for every form of light. For example, a radio telescope uses a massive antenna that can collect signals from outer space that hit the dish which reflects into a focus and the information is then stored on a computer. It was this telescope that detected proof of the Big Bang and is associated with looking for signals from extraterrestrial life. Ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma rays cannot be detected from the surface, so their telescope must orbit the Earth in order to gather data. In the case of X-rays, The light waves are so energetic that they do not reflect off glass mirrors, so instead the mirrors are made from metal foil coated with a thin layer of reflected material such as gold or iridium. These mirrors work off the idea that there is a total reflection of light at a grazing incidence. However, there are other more exotic telescopes that are tuned to receive particles instead of photons of light. A Sharenkov telescope can measure cosmic rays, high energy particles that originate from outside the solar system and a neutrino detector built several kilometers down into the Earth can measure neutrino particles from the Sun and supernova within our galaxy. More recently, a new class of telescope has revolutionized the field of astronomy. Gravitational wave observations seek to observe minute distortions in the fabric of space-time itself, as predicted by Einstein's general relativity a hundred years ago. The design of this telescope is based off what is called a Michelson interferometer, This is a laboratory setup where there are two mirrors, a beam splitter, a light source, and a detector that are all placed in the following manner. A laser is fired from the light source and interacts with each mirror, causing some reflection and absorption until it reaches the detector. This setup causes light from mirror 1 to be out of sync with light from mirror 2 when it reaches the detector, causing a diffraction pattern like so. In the case of gravitational wave telescopes, These mirrors are separated by several kilometers and rely on the change in position of a mirror when a gravitational wave passes through. In 2015, the LIGO observatories successfully measured gravitational waves caused by a pair of merging black holes trillions of kilometers away, 
opening up an entirely new window to observe the universe. Our universe appears to be a weird and wacky place with fantastic events that appear to be occurring every second. Only 400 years ago, we were essentially blind to its wonders. But thanks to the advancements in physics and engineering, we can use telescopes to look up at the vast abyss and begin to see.